6.2 talks about angle and orthogonality in inner product spaces. Well, the angle is straightforward. We did that already. Orthogonality is what we're going to focus on really quick. We did that already, but we're going to pretty much generalize on it. So <laughs> we have an equality here. If u and v are vectors in the real inner product space, what between means there's complex. We covered only section 5152.5354 covers complex inner space, inner product. So we're just going to talk about the real for now. <clears throat> so Cauchy Schwartz inequality states if you take the absolute value of the inner product that is less than or equal to the magnitude of the first times the magnitude of the second. And by doing so, we know that this is bigger, and therefore, this value right here, well, bigger than or equal, we know here then, then that value right there without the absolute value would be as small as negative 1 and as big as 1. If they're equal, you get a 1. And if this is actually bigger than those, then this is definitely between 0 and 1 in absolute value. But if you drop the absolute value, then that is pretty much between negative 1 and 1. And the following two fall out of that as well, those inequalities. I'm just having them there in case I need them later on. And we know the angle is between 0 to pi since cosine is positive in quadrant 1 and negative in quadrant 2. So from previous chapters, if this value is positive, we know that the angle is acute. And if the value is negative, we know the angle is obtuse. And we follow if u, v, and w are vectors in the real inner space, inner product space vector v in case any constant, then the magnitude of u plus v is less than or equal to the sum of the individual magnitudes, and the distance from u to v is less than or equal from the distance from u to w and then w to v. Those could easily be seen. Uh, we know already if u and v are uh, two vectors u and v and an inner product of v are called orthogonal if their dot is zero we already know that and here this is referring to the uh, uh, what do you call it this refers to the law of cosine if u and v are orthogonal in real inner product space, then the magnitude of u plus v would be the magnitude of u plus the magnitude of v. It should be minus twice the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of theta. If they're orthogonal, the cosine of theta is zero, and therefore you're left with just this inequality. And the last definition. So those we're gonna derive, they're kind of like just computational. This is a bit theoretical. I want to talk about that. We touch on that slightly slightly if w is a subspace of a real inner product space v then the set of all vector in v that are orthogonal to every vector in w every single one is called an orthogonal complement of w and we denote it with w with the power of perpendicular notation if W is a subspace, then W, the orthogonal complement, is a subspace of V as well. The only combination, the only intersection, the common vector between W and its orthogonal is the zero vector. And if you take the orthogonal of the orthogonal, you get the vector back. You get this subspace back. So let's practice those a bit. Find the cosine of the angle between the vectors with respect to the Euclidean inner product. Well, let's see how that works. Well, I know that cosine of theta equals u dot v divided by magnitude of u magnitude of v. Well, let's see. Before I start, I should figure out if u dot v is 0, then pretty much I'm done. In this case, u dot v will be negative 3 plus 0, so that didn't work. Magnitude of u will be the square root of 1, which is 1. 
and magnitude of v will be the square root of 9 uh, plus 64 whatever that is so it's negative that's all that matters right uh, 60 73 so that cosine of theta is negative 3 divided by the square root of 73 well we know that the angle is obtuse because cosine is negative in quadrant 2 here if I take u dot v again the cosine of theta is u dot v divided by the magnitude of u magnitude of v well before I figure out the magnitudes that's 4 plus 0 minus 24 dang it that's not working 4 minus 24 is negative 20 over square root of 64 65 65 and 16 65 and 16 that's 81 and the square root of 9 plus 1 is 10 there again this is an obtuse angle and here oh man none of them are zero what do you know cosine of theta is u dot v u dot v will be 8 divided by the magnitude 49 50 54 55 Uh, well, obviously, square root of 16 is 4. You could reduce that. It doesn't really matter. The goal is just to make sure that we could find these angles if needed with a calculator, unless they're one of the standard angles. And we want to apply that on the different types of uh, uh, vectors. Here we have vectors. Here we have polynomials. Then we have matrices. And we want to just make sure we know how to do all of that. Find the cosine of the angle between the vectors with respect to the standard inner product, well, I'll say cosine of theta equals, here it will be P Q divided by the magnitude of P, and we'll talk about what that means, magnitude of Q. We did this already. Well, if I take this, that's pretty much what? Uh, the constant is 0. 0 times 7 plus 1 times 3 plus a negative 1 times 3 divided by the square root of 0 squared plus 1 squared plus a negative 1 squared, the square root of 7 squared plus 3 squared plus 3 squared. So the cosine of theta would be, and let me see what that is. That's a 0. 3 minus 3, oh my god, that's 0. No need to figure out the rest. So that's simply 0. And I was just saying, let's find those first. That saves you time. But if it wasn't 0, then, you know, that's over square root of 2 times the square root of 49 plus 18. 49 plus 18, uh, 7, 67. All right. How about if we wanted to find the angle on a vec uh, 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 matrices, cosine, okay. Cosine of theta would be, and let's see how this works. If you recall, if I was doing u v, that was the trace of u transpose v, whichever comes first, right, in that order, divided by square root of the trace of u transpose v times and here it's going to be the trace of the v transpose v okay why is it doing that oh Oh my goodness, okay, I'll get it right here. When you do the magnitude just on that, will be the square root of the trace of u transpose u and the magnitude of v. That would be the magnitude that will be the trace of v transpose v. There we go, and let's figure out what this is. If I figure out uh, 
that's negative 6 minus 4, negative 10. And that will be a 2 minus 2, 0. And that will be a negative 12 plus 12, that's a 0. And that will be 4 plus 6, which is 10. That would equal negative 10 plus 10. That's one way. Another way of doing this is for you to say, well, look, forget that. The inner will be, well, just go component-wise. No need to use that. 2 times negative 3, negative 6, plus 4, minus 4, plus 6. And that will be a 0. And here you could figure out, okay, why do they look like that here? I'm just going to write a U. Assume that's capital U. And assume that's capital V. You could do that, or you could simply say, look, take u to itself. Well, in this case, that's a to itself. Well, that's what? 2 times 2, 4 times 4, negative 1 times itself, and 3 times 3. That's easier. Times the square root of, and for b, you multiply that. Well, that's negative 3 squared plus 1 squared, plus 4 squared, plus 2 squared. It's not going to matter because the top happened to be 0. But if it wasn't, that's how you'll do it. So you could do the trace from the previous sections, or you could just apply it straight. Matrix A with the inner product of matrix A, and matrix B with the inner product of matrix B. And here's... A slightly different idea, not that much difference. It says determine whether the vectors are orthogonal. Okay, well, we're given vectors, we're gonna do polynomials and we're gonna do matrices. Again, we're gonna keep on doing these things. So I should have put A and B here, no? I was just referring to that. So how does that work? Well, it's fairly simple if you're given two vectors. Take the inner of those that's u times zero u sub one times zero plus u times zero plus okay, you know what that is u sub one times zero plus u sub two times zero plus u sub three times zero that is zero so yes they are orthogonal and we know that from before how about the following well again take u v that would be negative uh, 8 plus 6 plus 20 plus 9. And that's definitely not equal to 0. So no, it's not. So A is, uh, B isn't. Not orthogonal. All right. A bit of adjustment. So again, this is not a really that long of us. I mean, there are a lot of problems, about 13 homework problems, but they touch on everything just really quick. You could get that again. Show that the vectors are orthogonal. Okay, well, show that the vectors are orthogonal with respect to the standard inner product of P2. Okay, well, take P Q. You get zero, you're set, you can't. Well, how does it work? Eight minus six. Minus 2 is 0. There it is. That's sufficient. That's all you have to do. And how would you do the inner product on matrices? We did that before. Two ways of doing that. We could use the notation that I used up there. The trace. As you see, that's a lot of work. It's much quicker to just say, well, look, if I take u v that's simply 5 minus 3 minus 2 plus 0 that is 0 so yes it oh show if it says you show it is right 
So by showing that the inner product is zero, that's sufficient. I'm just going to shift a few things. And here, if they give us some weight, show that the vectors are not orthogonal with respect to the Euclidean inner product of R2, and then find the value of k for which the vectors are orthogonal with respect to the weighted Euclidean inner product. Well, okay, there's k right there. Let's look at these vectors first. If I take the inner product of those, that will be uh, 2 times 0. 0 minus 12, which equal negative 12, does not equal to 0. <laughs> if I'm going to use the, the weight, if I say, look, take uv and use the weighted given, then that's going to be 2 times 2 times 0 plus k times negative 4 times 3. And, of course, that's 0. That will be tw negative 12k. So what they say, and then find the value of k for which the vectors are orthogonal. If you said k equal to 0, in this case, that will work. But now, if I really look at this, this is saying now that So, by putting a zero there, it's kind of demolishing the J component of this, right? Which does not represent the inner product. So, we say in this case, that's the only value and it doesn't work. We say no value of K can be found or would work. What if I'm given, so if I'm given a matrix, we know how to do that. That's kind of just like dotting the components. That doesn't seem to be a big issue. But if I run into the vectors, show that the vectors are orthogonal with respect to the inner product of R2 that is generated by this matrix. Well, here if we say U, V, that would simply be, and if you recall, 2, 1, 1, 1, dot it with 3, 3, and 2, 1, 1, 1, 5, negative 8. That would be 6 plus 3, which is a 9, and 3 plus 3, which is a 6, and that will be 10 minus 8 which is 2, and 5 minus 8, which is negative 3, and that will be 18 minus 18, which is 0. So we could do a matrix, and we could do a matrix that, uh, vectors that are generated by a matrix as well. Now we're going to go to that inequality and just verify it on a couple of problems, and that's pretty much it. So the Cauchy Schwartz inequality, it says these are two vectors. Use standard. Uh, using using the standard, confirm this using the standard inner product on M22. Well, if we take assume those are capital letters because you know that's what matrices are, that would be what? Well, if I take negative 1 times 1 plus 0 plus 18 plus 3 that would be the absolute value of what is that 18 17 20 which is 20 now if I take magnitude of u that would be I'm mixing things up forgive me Assume that's capital letter. So if I take the inner product on itself, that's the square root of negative 1 times negative 1, 2 times 2, 6 times 6, and 1 times 1. That is 36, 40, 41, 42. 
and if I take the magnitude of capital letter of matrix V, that's capital the matrix dotted by itself that is one squared plus zero squared plus three squared plus three squared uh eight nine eighteen that's the square root of nineteen and if I use that inequality I would know that those are all capital letter and that's less than or equal to uh, let me see yeah it is square root of 42 times square root of 19 which is the square root of 42 times 19 798 and that's the square root of 400 perfect so the square root of 400 is less than that which is again assume all of these are capital letters and there it is so we could show that on a matrix We could also show that on a vector. If I take, and I ha yeah, we have one more to go. So if I take these R vectors, operating on that, that's absolute value of 2, 1, 1, 1. And that would be, let's see. Three, two, two minus one and one minus one zero. And that would be three plus zero, which is three. Got it. And if I do the individuals, And we did this already, but here I'm going to write it out. And we said that was 3, 2, dot it with itself. And that would be the square root of 9 plus 4, which is... 13 and obviously radical 13 is bigger than 3 by itself but if I do the magnitude of V for practice and 1 negative 1 And that would be 2 plus 1, 3, and uh, 2 minus 1. It's right. It's right there. There. So that's 2 minus 1. That is 1, 1, 0. That's radical 1. And again, we could see with ease that And verify that now 26 I just want to point out one thing out of this that concludes this section something we're not gonna get into a whole lot but it's very important to know it says find the bases 
for the orthogonal complement of the subspace spanned by this vector? Well, basically that's what you're solving. You're solving AX equals zero, where A consists of Two, three, six, and nine, three, negative two, one, four, negative one. I think about it for a minute. So I'm not after the busy work. If I work this out, I'll get the following augmentation. Or I say the following reduction. So what do we know? Assume that's the case. X1, X2, X3, X4, X5. So X5 is free. X4 is free. X3 is free. X2 is negative X3, negative X4, minus 2X5. And X1 is negative X3 plus 2x4 minus x5. So if I look at these vectors, they represent 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, just one and zero zero one negative one negative one so we would so say find a basis for the orthogonal complement of the subspace Hopefully I didn't make a mistake. There they are. Any combination of those will do. And since that's AX equals zero, that means those are the orthogonals. And that's pretty much it for the section.